There is a lot we have to cover. I'm giving you 10 things to, no, I don't mean. I wanna help you crush salary negotiation. Let's talk money. Okay, everyone, so a lot of you have been asking for this video and I'm happy to finally deliver, but if you are new here, my name is Cassandra and I help people by giving practical tips to gain career confidence and achieve those career goals. So let's dive right in. Tip one, you should always try to negotiate. No matter what position, always at least try to negotiate. They are not going to rescind the offer. You need. I just hit everything. You need to know that it would be very, very unlikely that they would rescind just because you tried to negotiate or you gave a number that's too high. We will get to that one in a little bit. Thing number two, you need to know your worth and you need to know what the salary's worth might be. So on the salary side, you need to do your research. Are you on Glassdoor? Are you on LinkedIn? Are you on all those salary websites? Seeing what's typical in that range in your area. You should do your research so you're not going in blind. Then, this is where knowing people comes in real handy. Y'all, if you know somebody well enough, they will talk money. We act like people won't talk money, but if you get nothing else from this video, please know that if you start to develop friends in a certain industry or certain companies, you can ask them like, hey, I'm looking at this position. I'm not quite sure how much it makes. I can't really find the salary range is, you know, $40,000 difference. I don't know. Can, can you give me a ballpark of what you think entry level would be? They will tell you. People will tell you a ballpark of what they make. But then you need to know your worth. So this is important for two reasons. One, your worth might be different than that friend who's worked in the industry 10 years. So if they said, I'm making 80,000, but it's showing the starting range is 40, no, you're not gonna make the 80 they are. So you need to think about your worth in terms of, what you might not be worth, but then the bigger issue is people tend to undervalue themselves. So I want you to write your list of all the reasons why you're worth a higher number. If Do you have past experience in the industry? Do you have experience in a different industry or a different skill set that you think is an asset because it makes you a different member of the team? I had a really weird set of skills to be in the job I'm in now that other people would not have and I leveraged that why it would make me a better candidate. Got the job. Uh, so I leveraged that for why I should get a certain number as well. Think about all your skills and write all of those down. Things that cannot go on this list for your worth are your rent, your mortgage, your childcare, your groceries. That's not why you get this number. You get this number because of the things you bring to the table. So I have had a lot of comments on the video about 10 things to never do in an interview, saying, how dare you say we never talk about money, that I should never ask, that I should just go in and have no clue what this position is for. Okay, that depends on the industry. And I didn't say you should never ask. I meant it more of, you don't say it like, so how much would I be making? If you start with a recruiter in this process, you have every right to say, you know, I would hate to waste your time going forward and the hiring manager's time if this isn't a good fit monetarily. I know you can't give me a hard set number, but is there any way you could possibly give me the salary range so we know if this is worth moving forward? That's perfectly fine. It shows you're being respectful to them. Now, please notice I did not say, I would hate to waste your time and mine. I said, I would hate to waste your time. Focus on them. You're trying to give them the benefit of the doubt of like, I know you got a lot of people to connect with and I would hate for us to walk all the way through this process and not figure out if this is a good fit. Now, that works if you're talking with a recruiter first. In my experience, especially if you found the job through networking, you often don't do a recruiter screener first, you go straight to the hiring manager. And that's like the real interview, right? Uh, and then sometimes HR has to come around later and like talk to you for a couple minutes. It's kind of a weird thing. Let me know in the comments if you've been through it that way. I have many times. Uh, if that happens, it is not the appropriate time to ask about salary. Yes, you should not go in blind 
to an interview process. But this is why you should be doing all your research online to see if going through this process is even worth your time. They might not be able to tell you in that call. If it's with a hiring manager, they might not be able to tell you in that time. But if you've done all your research, you're fine going farther in the process to then find out later on once the offer has been made. But if you start with a recruiter, ask in that first call. Just don't say, how much money would I be making? Or like, I need to see if this is even worth my time to continue. No, I would hate to waste your time. Would you be able to let me know what the salary range is for this position so we can see if this is even a good fit to move forward? All right, number four, you need to always ask for the top of the range or at least higher than what you're wanting. So this seems to make sense, right? Because this is a negotiation. If you want $50,000, don't ask for 50,000. They're going to counter with something less. They're always gonna come in less. So if they've given you a range of 40 to $50,000, ask for 50 because you might get 45, okay? Or going with, if you want $50,000 and they've said the range is 45,000 to 55,000, ask for the 55,000. Now, some of us work in industries where they're like, the salary, true story, the salary range is between 40 and $70,000. My first thing to you would be, you can totally ask for the 70,000, they might think you're a little crazy, but they will not rescind the offer. Please remember that. They're not gonna rescind the offer. They, you're gonna say, oh, I would like 70,000, and they're gonna go, uh -uh. And then they'll come in with a number they can actually give. So keep that in mind. What I think might be slightly better is think through that number you want. So let's go with this 40 to 70,000 range. You want $50,000. They say we're offering 40. I would at least say $60,000. Let them come down. They'll come down and say, we'll give you 55,000. And you're gonna go, that's 5,000 more than I wanted. Okay, so always give higher than the number you actually want because they are always, whatever number you give, they're gonna give you lower. They're never gonna go, we can meet that demand. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so the next thing you need to know, there is great debate out there of what to do if they ask you what your salary expectations are. There is lots of, of articles written and studies done that you should always get them to go first. However, Harvard Business Review did a study and said it's actually in your interest to share your expectations. So I'm not going to give you an answer on that one. Here are the two things you can do. That now looks like four, but here are the two things you can do depending on which way you want to go. And I think this is where you have to go with your gut. I'm not trying to be wishy-washy here. As with a lot of things, there's not one perfect answer. So I want to give you the two options whether you go first or whether you push them to go first, and then you can decide which one is right for you in your salary negotiation process. So if they say, well, what are your salary expectations? And you really want them to go first. One thing you can say is, you know, I'm sure we will be able to come to an agreement of a good compensation package. What I really want to focus on more is a job where I can use my skills and enjoy my day with my coworkers or something like that, like where I can use my skills and be fulfilled at work. And if you have a job that you really want because it's gonna get your foot in the door of the industry you wanna be in for the next 20 years or something like that, you might wanna go with that. I would say, you know, I'm fine talking about uh, money later. What I really wanna focus on is a job where I can use my skills and enjoy the work I do every day. That's what fulfills me. You can also say, you know, I'm very open and I feel that we can definitely come to an agreed upon compensation package when the time is right. That's another option. Now, the opposite way to go is to give a salary range that you want based on your expectations of what the position should be and all that research you did, you did hmm, from the first tip. You would say something like, you know, I'm really looking for something in the range of 
50 to $60,000 or whatever it is. Y'all, I'm not trying to say that's where all jobs lie in that range. It's just easy math. I'm looking for something in the range of around 50 to $65,000 based on the research I've done of what's expected for someone in this role in this area. You're basically doing the switch of what you did to the recruiter. Okay, so the sixth thing you need to know, don't forget that you are negotiating a total compensation package not just a salary number. So do your research on what's included, right? What kind of benefits do you get? Um, is there an HMO and a PPO? Do they give money to your 401k? Is there some sort of matching program on that? Do you have to pay for a parking permit for where you're working? Does that come out of your uh, budget? Do you have to give union dues, y'all? Those union dues take a lot. Think about all those things on top of vacation, sick time, professional development. You want to look at the whole package. So part of this, I will be honest, I have never heard anybody negotiate. It's written in so many articles and so many people talk about, oh yeah, you know, you can also negotiate sick days and vacation time. I've never heard anybody negotiate more sick days. But... I myself have negotiated professional development. In my package for a job, I said, yes, I would like this salary range. I would also like my membership for this association to be paid through the company because it was an expensive fee. It's like over $1,000. So while I didn't get $1,000 in salary, I have $1,000 that I didn't have to spend towards this membership that I get to be a part of. So you, and for years on. So think about things like professional development. If parking is part of it, you can try and negotiate that they should pay your parking, things like that. But you wanna look at that whole package and think about what things you can negotiate based on that. So you could also say uh, with professional development, like I would like funds to attend one conference a year or to take one course or to get a certification. Things like that can be negotiated into the package. Okay, so number seven, you need to know your take-home pay number. This means that you need to have budgeted. What do you need for rent, for your car, for groceries, for time with friends, for entertainment, for clothing, for makeup, hey, whatever it is for you, what is that number? Don't think that when they say, so let's say that number is $1,500 a month. When they say, we're gonna offer you $1,500 a month, do not go, oh, this is great. That's exactly what I need. No, it's not. Taxes come out of that. That parking permit could come out of that. Union dues come out of that. Medical comes out of that. Any PPO stuff, if you go above that, comes out of that. You need to give money to uh, your retirement. Some of us give to our churches every month. Like, you need to think through all the numbers. So know what your take-home pay would be. You're not gonna be able to do it perfectly, right? Because you're not like in there doing the percentages all the time, but figure out, okay, so if they say I get 50,000 a year, well, monthly that comes down to this number, and then that comes down to this after taxes and the percentage that you should be able to find on their website of like how much percentage gets taken out for some of these things. If you can't find it, do not be afraid to talk about that with the recruiter or hiring manager making the offer. Like, hey, I would, you know, I really just need a minute to think about this. I'm curious with that number, is there any money coming out for union dues? Is there any money coming out for a parking permit? Or are there any fees that I'm going to have to pay within the company? Check all that ahead of time so that you know what number you actually need to be able to accept the job. All right, number eight, and I already know this one's gonna be controversial and some people are gonna leave me comments. You have to know that certain places are going to have zero negotiation. Now remember my first tip, you should always try to negotiate. You should always say, is there room for negotiation or that number isn't going to quite work for me, I was looking something more around this range. Remember, they will not rescind, but what might happen is they say, we will offer you $48,000 and you need 55 and you say, that number will not work for me 
or you want 55, let's put it that way. That number will not work for me. Um, unfortunately, you know, what I was looking for was something more around $55,000. They may come back to you in that phone call and go, I'm sorry, we have no room for negotiation on this. The, the number is 48,000. Okay, you still asked. You had to at least put it out there. Then you can say, is there room to negotiate anything else such as professional development or vacation, etc. Even though I've never heard someone getting vacation, people recommend doing it. You can at least try. They will go, no, I'm sorry. There's no room on any of that. You'll go, okay, that's fine. Uh, can I have some time to think about the offer? And then you can come back and say yes or no. But just know, do not be shocked if you are in an industry where there is no negotiation. I work with people in film and television all the time. And I will tell you, some of those assistant jobs at studios there is no, mine, my first job included, there was no room for negotiation. They're like, nope, this is the number. Because if you don't want to do it for that price, there are 40 other people lined up behind you who will do it for that price. So you just have to be ready for that. Now, once again, press for it. Just get ready that they might say no. They will not rescind if you press, but no, they might say no. Okay, that's it. All right, so number nine, make them wait. You heard me say it in the last tip that they'll say, you know, no, this is our number and you can go, okay, I'm gonna need a day or two to think about that. They might change their minds and come back and offer you something different. Uh, you also just might need to take a day to think through, is it worth doing it for this number? I wasn't quite, I was looking for something that was a little bit more, but could I do it for this? Is it worth it for the future growth within the company? Is it worth it for the fact that I will get these um, experiences that I haven't gotten before. Think about those sorts of things. Take a day, make them wait. You can always say, you know, I'm gonna need a little bit of time to think about this. When do I need to get back to you by? Or could I have the week to think about it or the next four days or whatever it is? You could say week and they could say, unfortunately, we need to know in three days. You'll go, okay, I will have a decision in three days. Either way works. And then 10. You need to know your walk away number. You need to know your take home salary number, which is most likely your walk away number, but depending on the job, depending on what they could offer you, depending on like in terms of professional development, you might be able to go, well, I'd like to spend $300 a month on entertainment, but I can bring that down to 150 a month if it means I get this great experience. So know your walk away number. This more is from an emotional point. Sometimes we are just so desperate for a new job. We are in a toxic environment or we've been unemployed for a really long time and we just need something. But if that number isn't going to give you the money to pay your bills, we need to know we need to walk away. Some places just aren't worth it. Um, and if they're not valuing you to a reasonable amount, being one of those ranges that you found on Glassdoor or Payscale, well then, that might not be a company you wanna work for and you really need to think about that as well. I hope these uh, things to know have helped you. I hope you feel a little bit more educated on what to do in salary negotiation. There is not one specific way to do this, no matter what anybody tells you. Every industry is a little bit different. Every company is a little bit different. Heck, every department can be a little bit different. So keep these tips in mind and figure out your range. Figure out your take home salary. Figure out your walk away number and be brave to make the asks. They will not rescind the offer, okay? It, I have never heard of anyone getting their offer rescinded for asking something too high or for asking for a day. If you don't come back in time, they might rescind. But don't be afraid to ask. That's the biggest thing. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any great negotiation stories in the comments. Give people the courage to go forward and do this for themselves. And I will see you next time. Bye.